Welcome back to Financial Enlightenment. I'm Michael Romero, and today let's talk about AT&T's dividend cut. They're saying it's gonna be around 50%, close to 50%, but we have some of the raw data so we can kind of show you that uh, exactly where it'll be. Not quite 50%, you know, 40, 45%, something like that, but that's still relatively high. We're gonna talk about why they're doing so. We're gonna look at a few articles and we're gonna look at the uh, Warner, well, Warner Media Group uh, merging with Discovery, which is why everything is going on and why they're doing it. And this is a $43 billion deal, guys. And it's all gonna make sense why they're doing this later on down the road. And stay tuned toward the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you uh, my take on it and what I will be doing with my shares if I'm gonna be adding more, selling, or holding, guys. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into it, this video is brought to you by none other than Webull, guys. That's right, if you wanna use Webull, if you wanna use my link in the top pin comment, hit that, download Webull, deposit your first $100, and you can get two free stocks valued up to 1850 bucks, guys. Who knows, it could, one could be AT&T, one could be Discovery, and uh, maybe not, but hopefully you get the $1,800 ones, guys, coming from me. That would be great if you did that. Look, and even if you don't like the platform, go ahead and sell the stocks, and put the money back in your bank account. It's literally free money. But hey, another great thing about this is they do have crypto trading now on there. They got Dogecoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Stella, several other ones that I'm not gonna name. But guys, hey, this is definitely a platform I learn, uh, I lean towards more these days. But I definitely use this a lot more than just trading, guys. <clears throat> the charts on it are amazing, the information on it is amazing, guys. But yeah, also smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, because it really helps this channel more than what you guys know. And uh, if you're watching this video and you've been watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, guys, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. It really helps join this family we have going on, guys. We're trying to hit 2,500 ASAP. And if you've already, you know, subscribed to the channel and all, go ahead and hit that notification bell. That way you know anytime I uh, release any of these videos. YouTube has been doing real we weird things with my channels lately. My channel lately, should I say. Uh, hadn't really been promoting my channel a whole bunch, so. Uh, we're suffering in the views area, but I'm not really worried about it, guys. It fluctuates up and down. But hey, let's go ahead and jump right into uh, what I want to show you. So we're going to get into the computer. We're going to read some articles and check out some stuff. Let's go. Well, guys, look at this here. AT&T is cutting its dividend and spinning off Warner Media. Here's how much its stock might be worth. So this is some of the information here. So AT&T stock is the biggest loser in the S&P 500 on Tuesday, which would be today, the filming of this video, May 18th. A day after announcing a mega deal to shed its media assets and focus on its 5G and fiber internet telecom core. Basically, um, getting rid of everything except its principal way of making money which would be uh, telecommunications, fiber, phones, anything to do with that, right? Um, guys, people forget at and is a phone company and here they are trying to, you know, run at media groups and, and media companies here. It might not be the, the best uh, bet. That may not have been the best bet, but they are trying to get back to their core principles and core values. So that strategic refocus was seen as a positive by investors and an and, and analyst but it comes at the cost of a dividend cut after the proposed spinoff closes worse still it doesn't solve the company's problem the deal will provide at&t with 43 billion in cash and other assets to pay down debt now people don't realize a lot of people don't realize AT&T is one of the most debted companies in the world. It's like 200 something billion. Last time I did a video, it was like 150 billion or 159 billion. I don't know where they got that other 40 billion in debt from, but that's not very good. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great, you know? AT&T shareholders will own 71% of the combined uh, Warner Media and Disney company with Disney shareholders owning uh, Discovery, sorry, Discovery shareholders earning the rest. Owning the rest. So basically what this is saying is the new entity that is gonna be made out of these two uh, com companies merging together, anyone who owns AT&T will have a 71% stake in there already, so you will get some shares of that company. And anyone who owns Disney will get a obviously, what, 29% stake. AT&T said it would reset its dividend as a part of the transaction to a payout ratio of about 40% of free cash flow, which management estimates at least 20 billion in 2023. 
That means roughly $8 billion in annual payout or some $1.11 per share for the year. Right now, we're looking at $2.08 per share. So that would be around $0.52 cents per share per quarter. Okay, so this is running around, you know, $0.29, cents, something like that, $0.28 cents per share. Um, there's not, it's, it's more than just $1.18. Uh, it's roughly, it's more around 116 if you look at other articles, but this is the be one of the better articles I found. So, at t has about 7.19 billion shares outstanding per its la latest filing. Should the Post spin off equity trade for the same annual dividend yield as Verizon, uh, current 4.3%, given a similar leverage and business profile, it would be worth 180 billion or some, or about, $25.88 per share. Management said Monday that they expect Warner Media and Discovery to generate about $13 billion in adjusted EBITDA, and that is short for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization in 2023. And to be levered at five times net debt to adjusted EBITDA at closing. So it's already gonna have about five times its net debt once upon you know once opening. Um, that implies about 65 million of net debt to the new entity. Now, I suspect that one of the reasons why this is happening is because of HBO Max. HBO Max is a top dog. Discovery isn't really that great in my eyes. I like HBO Max. HBO Max does numbers. Matter of fact, HBO Max or Warner Media brings in about a quarter of the income of the total of income of AT&T. So yeah, they're, they're kind of losing on there, but not really. Um, and we'll see why later, but check it out. In my eyes, this is a not great decision, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? And they're really selling this company to pay off debt and to build the company up more. So what happened is this company went from a, with HBO Max included, right? Warner Media included, AT&T had potential for growth, but now they just lost that potential for growth. So now it's just strictly a dividend play. It's not no longer a potentially growth play because over the years they could have built up that HBO Max, which would be a major player. Like I said, it was already a quarter of the income that they got from, you know, for, for the year from, from AT&T. So now it kind of sinks down into just a regular old dividend stock. And the fact that they're going to be cutting this, what is it, six, seven, eight percent dividend yield in half, almost in half. So it's going from seven or eight percent to three to four percent, which is still good, but most people were attracted to that high dividend yield. So we're gonna see what happens uh, in the near future. Add the $25.88 value to AT&T's telecom business, and AT&T stock today could be worth between $30 and $41.28, depending on whether investors believe Warner Media and, and Discovery will look more like Viacom, CBS, or Disney in the future. So looking at this company, so looking at AT&T, right, it's down, it's down like 10% in the past, you know, two or three trading days because of this information that came out. But the market cap is 211 billion, which is fantastic. I guess you can see the volume is massive, 189 million compared to its average volume of 42 million. And that's because of everything that's going on, right? Forward dividend as of now is still $2.08 or 6.46% guys. Short term is looking bad, obviously. Midterm to long term, they're projecting it to look good, which I believe the same, you know what I mean? Look at the earnings. Beat earnings, met earnings, beat earnings, beat earnings, and I bet they will beat earnings again, guys, because because of uh, HBO Max, it's, it's been hitting, it's been killing it. I'm excited to see what's that, what this is gonna look like afterwards and how they're gonna structure the company. Um, not structure, but what they're really gonna do and how they're gonna pay down this debt and, and how they plan on growing the company from there. So, this is what I was telling you guys earlier, how, as you can see this here, Warner Media is about $8.5 billion coming in, right? And the total revenue is $43.9 billion. So this is close to 10, per, uh, this is close to a quarter, 25%. This is close to 25% of the total income coming in for um, the entirety of AT&T stock. And I'm, that kind of worries me 
but it's also not that bad because they're they're going back to their core values their core principles of just a telecommunications company um honestly i was liking the fact that they had hbo max and these streaming companies on here you know what i mean because that like i said gave them potential to be a growth company but now this i mean we'll see we'll see what i'm gonna be doing with my shares toward the end of this video guys so look at this information here total cash on hand 11.37 billion okay and then levered free cash flow trailing 12 months 29 billion so we know the free cash flow is what is where we get paid from dividends where we grow the company toward the end of the year so it's nice to see that they have free cash flow it's nice to see they have cash on balance but look at this debt 209 billion dollars guys but they're receiving 43 billion from this deal from this merger they're also uh discovery and, and warner media have to take well discovery has to take some certain debts in order to acquire this company so we'll see what's gonna happen uh what exact debts later on in the year as more information comes up real quick 50 day moving average 30 dollars and 99 cents 200 day moving average 20 dollars and 59 cents and right now we are still above that 200 day moving average, which is all right, right? Now, looking at this here, let's look at this information directly from the AT&T Investor Relations. Under the terms of this agreement, which is structured as an all stock reverse Morris Trust transaction, AT&T would receive 43 billion subject to adjustment in a combination of cash, debt securities and warner media's retention of certain debts they be taking certain some debts with it as it leaves and att shareholders would receive stock representing 71 percent of the company so you'll you'll be getting some of the company if you own uh att or discovery the companies expect the transaction will create substantial value for at t and Discovery shareholders by bringing together the strongest leadership teams and content creators and high quality series and film and film libraries in the media business, accelerating both companies' plans for leading direct to consumer streaming services for global consumers. Just how everything has been going lately since the pandemic, you know what I mean? Uniting complementary and diverse content strengths with broad appeal. Warner Media's robust studios and portfolio of iconic scripted entertainment and animation, news, and sports with Discovery's global leadership in unscripted and international entertainment sports. I think this is going to be a good merger for them. You know what I mean? Um, forming a new company. So is this is going to be an entity in itself. Okay. Out of the three companies, out of the two companies, a little baby will be born and it's going to be its own company forming a new company that will have significant scale and investment resources with projected to 2023 revenue of approximately 52 billion adjusted EBITDA of approximately 14 billion and an industry lead free cash flow conversion rate of approximately 60 percent that's quite a bit <laughs> creating at least 3 billion in expected cost synergies annually for the new company to increase its investment in content and digital innovation and to scale its global DTC business direct to consumer. AT&T preliminary financial profile following completion of the transaction, focus total return strategy of capital allocation after close dividend payout ratio expected to be low 40s okay so after close and non pro forma basis AT&T expects its remaining assets to produce the following financial trajectory from 2022 to 2024 annual revenue growth low single digits consecutive annual growth rate low single digits I don't like that annual adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EPS growth mid single digits consecutive annual growth rate significantly increased financial flexibility to drive returns to shareholders including this is what i like expected increased capital expected increased capital investment for incremental investments in 5g and fiber broadband the company expects annual capital expenditures of around 24 billion once the transaction closes significant debt reduction expect net debt to adjusted EBITDA in its 2.6 times range 
after transaction closing less than 2.5 times by year end of 2023, guys. So it's trying to make leaps and bounds to get out of debt. Attractive dividend resized to account for the distribution of Warner Media to share to AT&T shareholders. After closing subject to AT&T board approval, AT&T expects an annual dividend payout ratio of around 40 to 43% of anticipated free cash flow of 20 billion plus dollars. The opportunity to repurchase shares once net debt to adjusted EBITDA is less than 2.5 times, guys. And that's really all we have for this. That's all the information we're gonna look at for this, guys. And really, once we get more information about this, uh, more details, I will re make another video about this because this is a large holding in my portfolio. As for what I'm gonna do with this company, I'm not gonna sell it, um, but I'm not gonna buy anymore either. I'm going to continue reinvesting the dividends into it. And hopefully, after everything goes through, we won't see a large slump in this company. We will see it start to grow. My main concern is that it no longer has potential to grow uh, at as quick a rate as it once had with you know HBO Max and all that. But we shall see. Guys, I'm not buying any more of AT&T as of right now, at least as up until the merger. At least, uh, maybe we might get more information that, that says different, but I don't know. We'll see about that, guys. But look, if you enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and let me know in the comments below what you guys plan on doing with your shares of, of AT&T. Um, also, if you haven't hit that red subscribe button yet, go ahead and do so to join this little family we have going on, guys. I appreciate every single one of you that have been with me on this journey to financial enlightenment the, the past few years, guys, and I really appreciate it. And if you wanna continue your journey to financial enlightenment with me, Go ahead and click one of these videos, guys. I'm gonna get out of here. Peace, love, and prosperity.